Today, I want to give you an introduction about the Wondom DSP board featuring an ADAU 1701 from analog devices. So what we can see here now in the video is the main board here one time with the ADAU 1701 DSP chip on it. And on the other one hand side, we have a small EEPROM for storing all the DSP data inside. Also, the board has like several potentiometer for like controlling some internal uh, DSP modules with some analog value from outside. We have some extension setter for uh, like ex uh, for connecting external ADCs and DACs via I2S interface. And also we have like two ports. This is the port for the analog audio input output and this is the port for the USB programming adapter. So now let's have a look on the um, input output module. This is the board shown in here. So we have like uh, one time an audio input, one time an audio output. This is both like a stereo connection and we have here a third output. Basically the ADO 1701 has like two inputs and four outputs. So we can use both inputs, but only three outputs, unfortunately, with this uh, extension board in here but still it's possible to connect it uh, some uh, wire header cables in here. So this is being connected to here. And then we also have our USB programming board. This you can see here. So this is the USB port. Here we have a small uh, Cypress microcontroller. And here we have uh, some cables for one time the power supply and then I2C interface and some GPIOs, for example, here for the uh, right protection of the EEPROM on the DSP board. And this is being connected to here. The test setup, which I will use in today's video, is one time the DSP port connected to a smartphone playing audio into it. And the output of the DSP I will record via a Zoom H4 recorder so that you can hear the audio output of the DSP in here. And on the other one hand side, only the USB programming board is connected to the USB and all the power supply for this board is also coming through this cable to the programming adapter in here. Actually, there is a really good documentation outside there in the internet of this DSP board. But unfortunately, everything is in German. But now let's have a look anyway on this web page. So this is the starting page. What you can find here is like documentation, how to install the drivers, um, how you can connect the DSP, um, how you can make your base setup, how to use the potentiometers uh, for controlling some internal uh, signal processing stuff, how to use the GPIOs, for example. And then there are some yeah, projects, for example, um, how to make an equalizer and an active crossover in the usage together with some loudspeakers. Then we have here like the aptX audio streaming via an external uh, CSR Bluetooth module. Then here are links, for example, for printing your own um, 3D enclosure for this uh, DSP board. Then we have like settings for the PLL, like how to connect um, or adjust the sample rate. And here also we have like the um, data sheet of the ADAU 1701. Here we have like the uh, pin out of the board, which you can see here, for example, that you know what pin is what, where to connect your I2S ADC or DAC and stuff like this. And my idea now is basically that I want to show you how to install the driver, how to install the Sigma Studio, and then let's do just some base projects to show you how to make a crossover, how to make an equalizer, um, how to use the potential meters and so on. At first, let's install the software. Here on the web page from analog devices, you can download the Sigma Studio, but you see there's only like version 4.5, version 4.4 and so on. The problem is basically that this Wondom DSP board is not an original analog device evaluation kit. So officially, analog devices does not support basically that Cypress USB programmer, which is inside this kit. But if you want to use it, um, of course, if you have a deeper look on the internet, there is some work around how you can use the USB programmer with also the latest version of the Sigma Studio. But in case you want to have an uncomplicated way, I would uh, propose you to use the old version 3.15, which I'm also using, because the driver, which is included, the old Sigma Studio is basically directly compatible with this um, fake programmer from Wondom DSP. 
If you have a look on the internet, there was like a uh, uh, forum from DIY Audio where you can download here the um, Sigma Studio 3.15 and you see it's also available and I would propose you to use this and then you should now have no problems with installing the driver later on. I have now connected the DSP board to the computer and as you can see in the device manager, there is an unknown device called EZUSB. What you have to do now is basically go to your um, installation file of, of your Sigma Studio installation and then if you go here to USB drivers x64, you will find the dp install.exe. This you will just open right now. And if everything is installed correctly, you will also see directly in here an analog devices USBI will be recognized in your computer. And now we should be ready to go for Sigma Studio. So now let's start with a basic startup project to just make an audio path through and have a look how the Sigma Studio is working. So at first we go to file new project and then we have here the um, hardware configuration overview. So we are using the ADU 1701. Then we are using also an EEPROM for storing the data and how to program it later on I will show you and then we need the USB-I connector. So this is basically our USB interface. Then we are making a virtual connection here. And here it shows already how it is connected, in this case over I2C, and we also see here like the I2C address. Then we go to schematic, and then we can make an, yeah, let's say audio uh, routing style. I don't know how to express it right now. But anyway, we have to go to IO now, go to input, those are now our two analog inputs we have directly on the board. This could be the digital inputs. You could also use via I2S then. Then we go to output. Once again, output. And there you can see already we have like, either we can choose one of the four integrate DACs or we have uh, the digital outputs uh, via I2S you can also connect. Then we are making virtual connection between those. And then we press here link compile download and if I press it now then you should theoretically hear directly some sound. And you see it's working. To program the integrated EEPROM so that the DSP can start up automatically without any USB connection to the computer, you have to check at first that the EEPROM is configured correctly. So you go right click properties and then you have to check if the memory size is fitting exactly for this um, Vondom DSP board. If this is fine in here, you can press OK. And then you go here to the ADIU 1701. You verify that the latest program is compiled and download to the DSP. And then you make right click and press write latest uh, compilation to um, EEPROM. Now OK. And now the DSP can start up automatically next time. Now let me show you how you can uh, use the potentiometer on the board of the um, DSP board to control, for example, the volume. For this, we will go here one time to input, holding our audio inputs in here. Then we make two audio outputs. Um, the next thing is we will have like an external control adjustable gain in here. And you see that we have one time the audio input, audio output, and but we need basically stereo control. So we grow this algorithm by one. Then we are connecting here to the output DACs, then one time to the input ADCs. And we need that auxiliary ADC input, which we will connect in here. And then if we have a look to hardware configuration, it will go to, I think it is MP9, this is the multi-purpose input pin or also output pin depending on the configuration and we use this as ADC0. And afterwards we will just compile the project and download. And theoretically the sound should be now controllable with my screwdriver in here. Making it louder. I hope you can hear it. Exactly. Now let me show you uh, how you can build your own two-way crossover for a speaker, for example. 
So for this, we are going to use the input module and the output module like two times because we want to have a stereo output, but we are only using one audio input in here and we are using now the two-way crossover module. So one input is going to the crossover input and we have like the low and high output to, the, to the both ADCs. Now I will um, compile the project, then we should be able to hear already the music. And you can hear if you have a headphone into it, you hear like on the left channel the uh, low sound and right channel the high sound. And I can also make like a live control of the DSP now in here. And we can also choose like different filters in here. For example, with 12 dB, 36 dB, even 48 dB, for example. We can invert the polarity. Now let's have a look, for example, how you can make your own internal mixer circuitries or how you can use also some peaking equalizers. So at first, we are holding once again our inputs in here to outputs. Then we are going to have a cross mixer. This is this device here. And we can fit like both audio inputs to this mixer. And yeah, let's put it maybe, I don't know, to yeah, minus 12 dB for example. It's a little bit hard to control, but it works. Then we are going here to filter second order double precision, then for example to medium size EQ, which we will fit in here to this one. And then we are going to have this to our output. But you will recognize that you can con that you can give like one output only to one um, input source, for example, to this ADC. So we are needing like a T connection, which is this one here. And then we should be able to connect both DICs basically. Now let's have a look at sounds. So now we can control here the um, equalizer by switching on and off. And now we can set here, for example, the frequency, like, I don't know, 2500 hertz. And now you should hear it already. Also a very nice effect, what I want to show you now is the dynamic bass boost, which I have already shown in my very, very first video on this YouTube channel. Um, for this, uh, we go also here for the two audio inputs, then two audio outputs. And then if you go here to ADI algorithms, dynamic bass, uh, stereo, you have like the dynamic bass boost in here. So this is especially very nice in case you have like very, very small speakers, which are actually not really capable of reproducing low frequency at high output levels. And therefore like the dynamic bass boost module is more or less like analyzing the uh, the, the lower frequency sound of the audio signal and is producing basically harmonics on top of the signal so that it actually feels like the speaker is having more bass actually as it is uh, having uh, at this moment. And therefore you can make like small speakers sounding very, very huge. And this is also how it works. You have like the low pass frequency and this is basically the sound which it assumes that it is like low frequency and this is being analyzed and some harmonics and later on are mixed to the uh, main signal. Now let's have a look. Yeah, best thing definitely is if you have a look yourself and just play around with it. A very last thing what I want to show you in this video right now 
is the analog device of Sigma Studio Toolbox. This is basically a website, more or less just like a catalog, where you can have a look on all the algorithms which Sigma Studio is providing. So we can here, for example, to multi-rate processing, then we have downsampling, upsampling, uh, we can have a look to advanced DSP, then we have the adaptive mixer, for example. Okay, usually it works. I don't know why this was not working. Let's try out maybe basic DSP. Then we go to delay. And then you see like how the delay modules is working, what you can do as settings in there. And yeah, let's have once again looked, for example, to filters. FIR filters may be interesting and there it's also like explained how the FIR filter is working and how you can set up the parameters and so on. And yeah, in case you want to get more deep into this device, this page is definitely a good help to see what's actually possible with the device. And yeah, from my side, that's all for today. I hope you liked the video and see you next time.